When I moved from Logic to Studio One, this one specific feature used to drive me insane until I really learned how to use it. I used to hate this feature. I loved everything else about Studio One except for this one thing. And the thing I'm talking about is the tracks versus channels. If you moved from another DAW to Studio One, I'm sure you've shared some of that frustration with me as well. It's not until recently when I realized just how powerful this feature is and why they added it inside of Studio One. So let me show you why I changed my mind. So here inside of Studio One, I have a track that sounds like this. And the thing I want to share with you first is the difference between the tracks and the channels. This is the only DAW that I'm aware of that does this. So a track is inside the arranger window here. This is a track. And for the sake of this video, I'm really going to be focusing on the drums. So here, if I just press solo on the drum track, it solos everything. And if I double click on the region here, you can see everything that I got here. Now, if I open up my mixer, there is a ton of different stuff down here. I've got my kick, snare, hi-hat, toms. Everything is separate down here in the channels. So how I like to imagine it is if anything has a fader, it's considered a channel inside of Studio One. And if it's in the arranger window, it is considered a track, just like an old analog mixing console where you had different channels or even modern mixing consoles where you just plug something into the channel and turn up a fader, that's considered a channel. The reason this used to irritate me is because when I'm here, I couldn't adjust my snare drum or couldn't adjust anything else. And that used to drive me insane. And the reason why is because I was used to logic and I didn't realize that it was such a clunky workflow until I started adding more tracks and working with more artists. And I started to realize that if you have a hundred tracks in a session, it gets really big, really quick. So if you take a look here, this is one track, but yet it is 12 different channels, including my drum bus channel. This is a massive screen real estate saver for me. When I am trying to mix, I go to the mixer window. When I'm trying to do something in the arranger window, I go to the arranger window and adjust stuff there. So hopefully by now you can kind of get the idea of why it is so powerful, especially if you have massive sessions. One other thing I want to mention is here, I only have one contact instrument, but let's say I want to add some extra MIDI notes and I want to have them on their own separate section. I could just duplicate this track down. I can add a drum fill in here. Let's do a bunch of snares for now. And I could call this drum fill. And when I go back and forth between the tracks and the channels, it didn't add a single thing to the channels. It didn't even add a single new virtual instrument. It is just adding those extra MIDI notes on a different track. So I can visually see the drum fills. If I want to copy a drum fill over, I don't have to find it in the MIDI region and copy it over. I could just create a different track just for the drum fills. So one thing that really confuses people is when they're exporting stems. First off, before I go any farther, I just want to say if you're sending out your stems to be mixed by another mixing engineer, then you're going to want to choose channels most of the time. So if I go to export stems here, there's channels and tracks. You can see I have a very small amount of tracks and I have a ton of channels. You can see 12 of these are the drums and only one here is drums. So if I export just the drums in the track section, it is going to send all of the drums to a single waveform. The kick, the snare, the hi-hats, the, the bus channel, if I have any effects, all of that is going to go to a single stereo file, which is not really what you're looking for if you're trying to get your song mixed. But this is super helpful if you're trying to actually render out stems so that way you can play some of your songs live. If you want everything in one track, it's super easy to do that inside of Studio One. Now, if you want multiple different channels, like most people do, you can click the channels and then just check the box on everything that you want. So obviously, with the kick all the way to the cymbals to the drum bus, I am going to want to stem out. All that stuff is gonna be stemmed out one at a time. So hopefully by now you can see just how powerful this actually is and why it was a source of frustration for me because I wasn't used to it and now it's become a feature that I just can't live without. If you are a Studio One user, you're gonna love the free presets I have down in the description below. They're just drag and drop right to Studio One. There's a few vocal presets and a couple other things in there. You're gonna love it. They're free to download and you literally just drag and drop them onto a track inside of Studio One or even a channel. 
I'll make sure I leave the link down in the description below for those. And if you enjoyed this video, you're definitely gonna wanna check out last week's video where I went through three different recording hacks in Studio One to make your workflow just that much faster. Studio One is great at getting out of the way of you and making music, and once you learn how to use it properly, it is just a killer DAW, and I can't live without it. So click there, I'll see you over there, and now as always, go create.